I, uh, that's tough. I know. That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is light entertainment. For me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you compare it to uh, to anything else that is happening, it's a totally different story. It is. It is. So let's start. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. No, maybe um, are we rolling now? Or? Uh, yeah, I'm rolling. You're rolling. Uh -huh. So, uh, for the tape, can yeah. you state your name and your company and your destination? Uh, my name is Hussam and Hussam Hammo, and uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Tomatum. Tomatum is the leading mobile games publisher for the Arabic speaking market. We are based in Amman, Jordan, and we have offices in California and in uh, Cairo, Egypt. Okay. So, um, when did you start? So, we started the company in 2013 um, after getting an acceleration from 500 startups in Silicon Valley, being the first Arabic uh, company to ever join that program in the US in 2013. And, uh, Tell us about your business. What's unique about Tomatum? So Tomatum as a business, uh, we take successful games from around the world. Uh, we localize them, make them culturally relevant, and we launch them in the Arabic market. The Arabic market is the fourth biggest language in the world. And yet there is no content available in Arabic. And the Arabic user want to consume content in their original language. And there are so many different games that they are unable to enjoy and play. And we are bringing all of these games to them to enjoy and uh, play as much as they want. The Arab world is a, demographically a very young area. Is that, was that something, was that a consideration when you started your business? I mean, the demographics in the Arabic region are really young. And uh, this is definitely uh, a main reason and the main driver for, uh, for them to consume digital content and especially on, uh, on mobile. But the main reason for us from a, a business perspective is that uh, the Arabic market has a, a very high average revenue per paying user and a lot of time spent on uh, consuming that content and playing games uh, online. Uh, why is it? proportionately higher than other regions? Um, the main reason behind that is uh, there is um, too much time uh, on the uh, user's hand and um, they want to uh, be able to enjoy uh, what the, other, the rest of the world is enjoying and playing. Uh, the, uh, uh, the income is high and um, uh, the, for, for mobile phones for example they have the highest end mobile phones available in the market today, for example, in Saudi Arabia. Um, and they are consuming content by nature. If you look at YouTube, for example, uh, the consumption of YouTube videos in Saudi Arabia is the highest in the entire world. Um, so uh, you publish games written uh, by other uh, producers, yeah. games producers. Um, what uh, what sort of um, what sort of games are they producing, and, and what is what sells yeah. the most? What's the most popular? So we are taking these successful games in different genres. Uh, we are focusing really on trivia and quiz games. The main reason behind that is they can be really culturally relevant when you really localize the questions and the answers and all of that. We are also focusing on racing and drifting games because that's a really uh, successful thing and a successful uh, venture in Saudi Arabia and the Gulf countries uh, in the region. They love cars, they love uh, driving cars. And for us, we want them really to play these cars or play these games on their phones rather than doing that in the street. <laughs> so uh, let them enjoy it while they are safe and while they don't kill themselves. <laughs> Aren't you afraid though that they'll play these games and then want to do it for real? <laughs> we are giving them a warning at the beginning of each session, telling them that enjoy it on your phone, please don't demonstrate this uh, in real life. <laughs> um, 
what about funding? Um, how easy or difficult was it for you to get funding, uh, your seed funding, and then funding at various stages in your development? So I had a previous company before starting this company, and we were focusing on games in general. And we received some funding back in 2011. It was really difficult in the region. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the lack of maturity and uh, the lack of maturity for entrepreneurs and for investors as well in the region, the company had to shut down uh, in 2012. After that, uh, no one uh, decided to invest in my new venture because uh, as part of the culture, uh, everyone believes that failure is really bad and no one invests in anyone that failed. So I really knocked on the doors of every investor that I know in the region. I talked to every single person I've encountered in my life and everyone said that you should go find yourself a job and uh, you failed once, why won't you fail again? Uh, so I decided that I will go and uh, maybe check other alternatives and this is why I applied to 500 startups in Silicon Valley, 10,000 miles away from Jordan and we got accepted and um, at, by the end of the day uh, the investors would invest in traction and will invest in something that is showing a graph that is growing really big. Uh, so when I came back and I had some initial results, people started believing a little bit more and started uh, investing. Investing is still really tough. And the main reason behind that is for two, two main reasons. The lack of competition for investors to find good opportunities to invest in. So when they decide to invest in your company, they can take a long time and a long process because they know that there is no one else will come and steal that opportunity from them. And the main other reason is that there is no major success story happening from the region that can encourage these investors that if I give you um, a one dollar, maybe one day I can get two dollars back from my investment. I mean, there are examples in Turkey, for example. Yeah. We were talking to Neilbox yesterday. Um, they are kind of following in the footsteps of Yemeksa mm. for example. Yeah. Um, was, are these kinds of examples encouraging for you that these things are now happening in the Muslim world? Uh, and is this something that's encouraging? Definitely. Any success story that is happening in the region can encourage both entrepreneurs and investors to become uh, or to invest more. Uh, so we are always happy and excited about things happening in the region or targeting the region. The whole boom that happened in Jordan, for example, uh, a couple of years ago was happening or due to the acquisition of Maktoub.com by Yahoo. And that drove so many different entrepreneurs uh, to follow and chase that dream. And maybe one day we can become like them. And when we hear stories about an activity, and there is a story in Kuwait about Talabat.com that is following the same footsteps of the activity. Uh, this is also an encouragement for both entrepreneurs and investors as, as, on the same time.